Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By and oh, 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 what joy when we get. You know we're going to rest beneath. We're going to rest beneath that cloudless. Oh, in that land where saints never you know we're going to sing hallelujah, hallelujah, by and oh, oh, what joy when we get, you know we're going to rest beneath that cloudless. Saints never, you know we're gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, good morning, South Lake. We want to thank God for his mercy, his grace, and his love for blessing us to come to his house. One more time to praise and worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. But to our visitors, we welcome you. That your worship with us will be a spiritual uplifting experience. We'll come back and visit with us again. <clears throat> well, God loves you, and so do I. God loves you. Turn to your neighbor. And tell your name. And so do I. You want to tell the truth now. Amen? Amen, amen. Well, just before we get into our lesson for today, I just want to speak for a moment on worshiping God. Amen? Now, we understand that our worship to God is personal, isn't it? Amen? I cannot worship God for you. And you cannot worship God for me. Amen? Amen? So, we find in God's textbook, we do have our textbook today, don't we? That's the Holy Bible. Amen? We always want to have our textbooks. Amen? But the scripture in John chapter 4, 24 tells us that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth to be God-centered, and for our worship to be acceptable. We must have the proper attitude when we come to worship. We can't be thinking about what we're going to eat for dinner, right? What, what's going to happen on our job next week, right? When we come to worship, we come to worship, amen? And, 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 and praise and give praise to the Lord. Now, we must come before God's presence with reverence and praise. Amen? So now, to worship God in truth is to worship God according to truth. Scripture in John 17 tells us, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Our worship, if it is to be sanctified and set apart, God, and for his praise, is word based on the word of truth. Now we know that the Old Testament has no authority for what constitutes acceptable worship for Christians. Amen? So let us always give God what he deserves, which is reverence and praise when we come to worship. And now let us focus on our lesson for today. Let us start by saying that God, that God is good. And God is good all the time. Amen? Well, with that statement, we must examine ourselves every day. And we must ask ourselves just how good have we been to God? Amen? 
every day we must, we must uh, give account to our Lord. Well, because God is so good, we we'll have to sing the song, keep falling in love with him. Amen? Every day. For each of us, we have a testimony, don't we? For how God has been to us, right? Uh, you just can't, you just don't know what God has done for me. Each of us should have a testimony on what God has done for you. Just think over your life, what God has done for you. No job, no money, <laughs> no car. <laughs> you got bills, right? You sick. God healed your body, didn't he? Amen, amen. So we must give God thanks. When we pray, we need to say, thank you, Jesus. You know, sometimes when we pray, we just think about what God wants, us, what we want God to do for us, right? Amen. So we need to pray just to say, thank you, Jesus. Because we've come a long, long ways, haven't we? Amen. Well, we need to pray and give God thanks more. Just when, just where would you and I be without, without God this morning? So we must always be humble and thankful. Now, as, as Christians, we must not only come to church. We are commanded to do what we must be, but we must be the church. Amen? So we are commanded to come to church, but are we being what God wants us to be as Christians. Our text this morning is taken from God's textbook, the Holy Bible, taken from uh, Matthew 16 and 18. Now, if you have your textbook, uh, turn with me Matthew, to Matthew 16 and 18. Matthew 16 and 18. See what the scripture says here. Matthew 16 and 18. We all should know this. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Jesus is talking here, right? He's saying, I, that's personal, right? He's talking about Jesus. He's talking. Build, he will build his church. And the, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, it means what? One. Right? Right? It just, it just, it just really means one. Um, now, just before we read those scriptures, I just read it. <laughs> how is your prayer life this morning? Now, I'm not asking how your love life is. I'm asking how your prayer life is, Right? Amen? Because, you know, uh, as a Christian, we cannot live a Christian life unless we have a strong prayer life. Amen? We've got to pray more. We just don't know what, what, what the life holds in store for us from day to day. So we must start our day off by praying and praying for each other because we all stand in the need of prayer, don't we? Amen? Amen. Well, as we go on here, I uh, spent about a couple of weeks doing this, <laughs> but I, I'm enjoying it. I'm a little nervous up here. It's been a while. It's been a minute, as they say. All right. Uh, uh, this morning, for our subject this morning, we would like to study and tell, talk about what the Church of Christ is not. What the Church of Christ is not. Now, if someone would ask you, what is the Church of Christ? And why are you a member of the Church of Christ? What would your answer be? We find in God's textbook in the Bible that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 15, tells us to be ready to give an answer. In 2 Timothy 2, 15, it tells us that we must study God's textbook, the Bible. That's what we don't do, do we? Enough of. We don't study God's word. Amen? And we want, we want to go to heaven, don't we? We well, always say, well, I want to go to heaven. Amen? But, you know, you got to have God's textbook to show you how to get to heaven. Amen? Amen? 
So uh, God's textbook is just like a GPS in a car, right? We call God's textbook the GPS, amen? We'll, we'll keep going in the right direction. Well, you know, the devil, the devil will cause us to go into the wrong direction. So that's why we need to study God's word so we can keep on going the right direction. The devil will cause us to take a detour from his holy and divine word, from the Holy Bible. Well, the Church of Christ is not. Well, the Church of Christ is not a denomination. The Church of Christ is not a denomination because denominations are man-made and are not and are without divine origin. The Church of Christ is not a denomination because they are named after men. The Church of Christ is not a denomination because they had their beginning from the 7th century on. The Church of Christ is not a denomination because denominations have creeds and manuals that they are governed by. The, the Church of Christ is, a, is not a denomination because they have many places of beginnings. The Church of Christ is not a denomination because they will be rooted up. The Church of Christ, the Church of Christ is a not, it's not a denomination because people join denominations. Each denomination, you see, has its own, its own doctrine. Amen? The Church of Christ is not a denomination because denominations have their headquarters on this earth. Amen? The Church of Christ is not a denomination because denominations believes in going to the church of your choice. Amen? The Church of Christ is not a denomination because denominations are wrong because Christ is not divided. According to 1 Corinthians 1, the verses 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. The Church of Christ is not a denomination because they are wrong because the body of Christ is one. It's only one body, right? So uh, we must be aware of what the denomination world is teaching and preaching. Now, now, just what is? What is the Church of Christ? Well, the Church of Christ is the church of the New Testament. The New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. We find in God's textbook, the Holy Bible in Romans 15 and 4, that the Old Testament was written for our learning. We find in God's textbook that the prophet Isaiah told of the birth of Christ some 700 plus years ago before Christ was even born. Amen? Amen. So we must, uh, we must remember what the Church of Christ is. Amen? In God's textbook, we read about the Lord's house will be established in the last days, which is in the Christian dispensation. Now, we've had Three dispensations. The patriotic dispensation, which was from Adam uh, to Moses, and the mosaic dispensation. It's from Moses, uh, given, uh, given, Moses given the law, from Moses until the death of Jesus Christ. And the Christian dispensation, which, is, which was started after the death of Jesus Christ. So we're in the last days, amen? The last days. So we guess we remember that uh, we have to be about the Father's business. We've got to be about the Father's business because the time is running out on us, right? Well, just what is the Church of Christ? The Church of Christ began on the day of Pentecost in the year AD 33 in Jerusalem after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 47. Isaiah chapter 2, verse, 40, verse 2, 
In Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and Zechariah chapter 1, verse 16. Now we find that Jesus Christ is the builder of his church, according to Matthew 16 and 18. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the church, according to Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, Colossians 1 and 18. The church of Christ is divine in origin, according to Daniel 2, 44, Matthew 16 and 18. The church of Christ has many Bible names, according to Romans 16 and 16, Acts 20 and 28, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. Jesus Christ is the founder of his church, according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. <clears throat> the church of Christ is called the body of Christ. Amen. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. Amen. Now, there is only one body, according to Ephesians 4 and 4. You're added to his church. You don't join the church of Christ, you're added to it. The headquarters of our church is in heaven, amen? And not on this earth. According to 1 Peter 3, 22, Ephesians 1, 22, and 23. The church of Christ was purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ, according to Acts 20 and 28, Ephesians 5 and 25, amen? Just what is the church of Christ? Well, the church of Christ... Uh, the church of the New Testament is, the church is the New Testament that are called out. We're the called out. The, the word church is used in two ways in the New Testament. It may refer to all those called out of the world for God's service universally. Matthew 16, 18, Ephesians 5, 23. The word church, it may also refer to those called out of the world for God's service in a specific location. According to 1 Corinthians 1-2, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 1. Then there is the nature of the call. It is the divine calling, according to 1 Peter 5-10, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. It is a holy calling, 1 Thessalonians 4-7, 2 Timothy 1 and 9, 1 Peter 1 and 15. It is a heavenly calling, Hebrews 3 and verse 1. Well, to what are we called? Into the fellowship. We're called into the fellowship and the peace of Christ, 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, Colossians 3 and 15. We are called to be the children of God, Romans 9 25 through 26. We're called uh, to be saints. 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Romans 1 and 7. Now, the calling comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 14. The church is the kingdom of God. Matthew 3 and 2, Mark 1 and 4. People who obeyed the gospel were members of the kingdom, Colossians 1 and 13. The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. According to John 3, 29, Revelation 22, 17, and Ephesians 5, 23. Now, we want, we want to thank God for sending Jesus to come down to this earth some 2,000 years ago to save sinners just like you and I. We find in God's book, it uh, tells us it is by God's grace that brings salvation to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. According to the book in Titus 2, verses 11 through 12, we see Jesus, Jesus Christ came down from heaven to die for the sins of the world. 
but to never die again. We thank God that he rose from the grave. Amen? Just think about Jesus dying on the cross for your sins and mine. An innocent man. Amen? Wasn't guilty of anything. Yeah, because of his love for you and I, he paid the ultimate price. Amen? So, when we come to church to worship, remember the sacrifice that Jesus did for us on the cross at Calvary. Amen? Just, just kind of picture in your mind the cruel, uh, the way he looked on the cross, the crown of thorns that was placed on his head, the spikes that was in his, driven in his hands and feet, the spear that went in his side that brought forth blood and water. Amen? Amen. And um, before that happened, he was beaten with stripes. Amen? So we just, we just got to remember the suffering that God's son did for us on the cross, right? We just can't take it for granted. Amen? We just, we, we just got to get ready. We got to get ready to go to heaven. And we got to ask ourselves, are we ready? We gotta, if we're not ready, we got to get ready. Amen? Because life is short. Take it from me. Look at my gray hair. <laughs> time, time is, time is, uh, it goes so fast. I remember when I was 18 years old. Amen? Time goes so fast. And so we must get our lives together. And we must uh, live a Christian life every day. And not only live the life, but we must share Jesus Christ with somebody else. Amen? We've got a story to tell. We have a love story to tell. Amen? It's a love story how Jesus died for us and, and, and did all that he did for us. Right? So we must um, just concentrate on that and, and just pray. And, and we need to pray for each other so we might all get stronger. And, and also we need to study. We don't study enough. Amen? So we must study God's word so that we may be able to uh, share the gospel with someone else, right? And that will help us keep on the right road, right? So uh, y'all pray that this congregation will grow spiritually and numerically. We have a lot of work to do. The preacher can't do it all. You know, uh, the elders and the deacons the teachers and whatever. Each of us will have to take responsibility in saving somebody's soul. Amen? So we've got a lot of work to do. We cannot go home and look at TV. Amen? Just chill out, right? You know, and you know how we do. We, get, we eat our food, our dinner, and then we, what we do, go to sleep, right? So we, we must... Uh, be about the Lord's business, okay? Uh, we really, we really do because uh, God, God done so much for us. And and if you just take a look, look at your life, where you've been, where you are now, and where are you going? Amen. Only God knows that. So uh, we need to keep in mind that Jesus loves us so much, and sometimes we don't realize how much Jesus loves us, right? Amen? So we must continue to study his word and share his word because we want this church to be filled with souls. Amen? And we want to go to heaven. And they said that everybody talk about heaven ain't going. Amen? So we got to get serious because this is not a playing thing, you know, because uh, Jesus is coming back the second time. Amen? Well, <clears throat> as we prepare for the invitation of Jesus Christ, uh, if you're not a Christian on this day, you can't make that decision to become a Christian today. Uh, you could be saved today. We see our time on this earth is very short. And we all have cell phones, don't we? Don't we all have cell phones? Amen? Well, guess what? God has your cell phone number. He's going to call your cell phone number one day. 
Amen? He has your cell phone number. And, you know, uh, you know, we can call everybody, but, you know, we need to call up Jesus. Call him up, right, as the song says, right? Call him up, all right? Let's have a little talk with Jesus. I said we need to pray more, amen? We need to get excited, get excited about our, our religious belief, that we're Christians, we're members of the Church of Christ, amen? So we need to be excited and, and be serious about our, our, our Christian growth. And we need to grow, you know, and uh, sometimes we get stagnant. And the, the devil causes us to become stagnant. We get to the place, we want to come to church. We don't want to go to Bible, Bible class. You know, uh, uh, church is boring. The preacher's boring. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, uh, Brother Taylor. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, we give all kinds of excuses, don't we? Amen? So uh, we just want to make sure that we uh, uh, do what we need to do as Christians and then we can grow and be what God would have us to be, okay? Well, how can you become a member of the Lord's church? Amen? By hearing the word of God, that Jesus Christ bled, suffered, and died, was buried, and rose on that third day from the grave. That you believe the word of God, that you repent of your sins, and with your mouth uh, re uh, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and be baptized for the rem remission of your sins. Not uh, sprinkled, but buried in the water grave of baptism. All right? All right. Um, uh, we just want to thank you for your, your attendance and, and your hearing of the gospel. And we just want you to pray for me that I may uh, be, become the, the servant of God that, you, that he wants me to be. Amen. And we've got to pray for each other. Amen? Amen. So we stand and sing the invitation song. Come to Jesus. If you need prayer, if you need prayer this morning, come to Jesus today. If you're a member of the Lord's church and you've sinned, come to Jesus and we'll pray for you and with you. God bless you. So you 